Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Talking Trees. I am so excited to welcome my guest, Allie Buchanan. Hey, Allie. Hi. Allie is tuning in from Canada. So you're in Ontario. What part of Canada are you in? I'm in Windsor, Ontario. We're actually just on the other side of uh, Detroit, Michigan. So wonderful. And as you can see here, we are getting our first big snowstorm of the year. It is beautiful. No, this is Allie with like, it looks like a fake backdrop behind you. It is <laughs> totally real. Good. It is a beautiful snowy day here in uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. And I think across the East Coast, up and down the East Coast. What is your weather like? Where are you guys tuning in from? Tell us what your weather is like. Allie, what's your weather like today? It is basically looks the same as it does in the background there. Just uh, maybe a little bit more snow at this point. It's been snowing all day. It's lovely. It is lovely. You said your first big storm. This is our first big storm. And I remember last year, we didn't even ever have to plow our driveway. So this year might be a little different already. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the weather. So that is right on cue. Thank you, Mother Nature, for prepping us for our talk today because what we're what Allie is going to share with us are some tips on how to prep our trees for winter. Um, winter is coming. Are you a Game of Thrones fan, Allie? I am not, but I hear it's great. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I'm not really either, but I've seen the shirts, winter is coming, and I don't know what it refers to, but if you're Game of Thrones fans out there, <laughs> winter is coming. We don't know, and Allie and I have no idea what that means. Whatever but that means. We need to catch up on our yeah, GOTs. Um, we are getting a lot, everyone's, it's Ohio, it's snowing, not in Michigan yet. Um, some light snow in Ohio. So it seems like it's going to be kind of a different winter than it has been in years past. And so um, it's really important that we make sure that our trees and shrubs and our landscape plants are well protected. Now, um, we will talk about that. So because I love winter, I, you must. I mean, I, I feel like every Canadian has to love winter. Is that just like a prerequisite? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I had to sign a form and everything before they gave me my passport. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Um, you are also an arborist, so you love, you must love being outside. I mean, you don't have a desk job. You are outside all season. You know, you're outside in the snow and the heat. You're outside year round. Absolutely. Yeah. So the scenery of winter is beautiful. As you can see, it's the dusting of the snow on the trees. I love everything about winter, how, you know, it just coats all of the branches. But as temperatures get colder and, you know, things get more frozen and sometimes a little bit more risky, there are some things that we can do to protect our trees because the ice is not just a hazard for us, but it can be a hazard for our trees. And there are some things we're going to do, some busted, myth busting today. Um, so if you guys have any questions about how to care for your trees in winter, now is the time to ask them. We have the expert. Um, I have some questions for Allie, but we always love to hear from you guys as well. So um, let's jump into it about being proactive. I mean, we didn't anticipate the snow today. So one of the things we want to talk about are things you can do before snow falls. But I imagine this snow will melt. It's not going to be here forever. So there are certainly some things people can do now. So we'll jump in um, for those. So first, why don't we talk about winter weather? So it's snowing. Is snow, I mean, what kind of things do adversely affect our trees? I can't imagine a little snow does anything to harm them. No, not normally. Like trees are naturally, um, naturally built or naturally grown to withstand the elements that they're in, right? Um, it's really when we get into like sudden weather changes. So for instance, today it's our first big storm and it's been snowing all day. So all of a sudden in one day, um, we have this really dense, heavy snow uh, that a lot of like plants and vegetation uh, aren't used to. So that can be shocking, but um, at the same time, most plants are gonna be fine with that because this is the region that they live. So, uh, and especially plants that are native to that, that particular region where, where that happens, they're they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna be able to react and respond to uh, to it accordingly for the most part. What about ice or high winds? We're supposed to get really high winds in this area. Um, when yeah, you've got course. winds coupled with that kind of weather, that can be. I imagine that could be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Like the best thing that we can do is uh, for preventative maintenance is to inspect our trees. So um, 
And that kind of goes hand in hand with maintenance. If we're not maintaining our trees, odds are we're not inspecting them. So we don't know when things, uh, when hazardous things are present like deadwood or cavities or uh, weak branch unions, things like that. If we're not looking at our trees and paying attention, then we don't know that those things are there and we can't really help them. So um, preventative measures are going out, making it a habit, not just when you hear there's a storm coming or um, when you see that a storm is brewing, you know, we wanna make sure that we get into the habit of regularly looking at our trees and uh, kind of monitoring them for those things so we can be proactive about about the maintenance of them, right? Oh, I know, I read that um, we, uh, we were outside, at least in the U.S., we were outside two hours a day more during this quarantine than we are, you know, when we were in quarantine, which is awesome. But when we are inspecting our trees, you, you say get out there and inspect our trees. What does that entail? I mean, do we look at, are we looking at the bark? Are we looking at the branches? We don't have leaves. Yeah. What, what exactly do we do? You're pretty much looking at everything from um, what is physically on the tree to what's surrounding the tree. So... What is the tree existing in? What are its roots existing in? Is it surrounded by concrete? Uh, is there a construction zone right next to your tree? Is it got lush mulch or soil around it? Like what's going on around the tree at the base all the way throughout the bark, the canopy, the leaves. Um, when we really start looking at our trees, like I've been out on somebody's property where we're looking at a tree that's infested with like gypsy moths say, and they're everywhere and they're like, oh my God, I had no idea. It's like, what do you mean? How could you miss that? But it's just because they're not looking, right? So um, yeah, you really want to pay attention to every every part of the tree, right? So even like, obviously you can't see much of the roots, but you want to look at the conditions that the roots are in. Uh, and then following up the bark, you want to make sure the bark is on the tree. You're looking for cavities, you're looking for holes, um, any hollow areas, cracks. Uh, and then in the branches, you're looking for uh, deadwood, which is, uh, it's obvious, more obvious in certain species, but basically it's going to be branches that don't have bark on them anymore, that don't have growth on them. Um, and you're going to notice like there's there's nothing going on with them. They're usually deep discolored. They're kind of not really serving a purpose to the tree. They're possibly hanging in the tree at that point. Um, so we want to look for that. And then any kind of uh, decoloration in the leaves or, or discoloration or... Um, any kind of uh, loss of foliage in certain areas. So if you notice that half your tree is dying, uh, then that's something to investigate, right? We wanna get to the bottom of that before it, the whole thing is gone, right? <laughs> yes, those are great tips. And I think particularly in spring or in fall, when we do have leaves in the trees or when there are pest infestations, you've gotta get out there and look at your trees, not just in winter, Ali is saying, do it all year round. Um, and then you'll know when to call in an arborist, you know, when you need a professional, if you see some changes, you'll get used to what your tree looks like. And then when you see changes, you know when to call in a professional. So one um, note I wanted to bring up, I don't know if you know Tommy Clayton, but he said, yay, Allie, great to see you doing well. So shout out, he wants to give you a little hello. Yay, um, what's up, Tommy? And then Sandy, you're kind of preempting one of my myth busting questions, but let's get to it now. Sandy is asking if I think this is a big myth. Should we shake the snow off of our trees and shrubs? Yes, you're right. It is a myth. Um, so uh, unless, it's, don't do it. right, unless it's very uh, dry and fluffy and it's not really going to make a difference anyway, um, then that's fine. But uh, by shaking the tree and stuff, you're kind of just causing more shock to it. So all of a sudden it's taken on all this weight and then suddenly you're going to take it off. So the tree doesn't really have time or get a chance to adjust to what's happening um, environmentally and then manually that you're then imposing on it. So just leave them. They are naturally naturally built to withstand that kind of stuff. So they can usually uh, usually do it themselves. Don't play mother nature. So I know <laughs> in the spring sometimes they say that are the leaves, if the leaves have already budded out and you've got heavy wet snow, that might be different. But here we are in the middle of winter, there's no leaves on the tree. Sometimes the branches could be more brittle, right? So if you're shaking them, you could be breaking a branch. You know, you're causing added stress to your tree. Right, especially coated in ice as well. Um, that's something that's very easy. Uh, if, if the tree, there's it's a lot of times you don't even notice and there's a full sheet of ice on, on a branch and just the slightest movement can cause the entire thing to snap off and all of a sudden you've severed a, an entire limb. 
So you want to really be careful when it's uh, when the temperatures are cool like this as well. And where's all that snow going to go when you shake your tree? Think about it. It's going to go right on your head. <laughs> so safety first, people. Um, all right. So we talked about when you have gotten out and you've inspected your tree. So talk to us through some of the things that we want to do once we do spot, like what you guys would do. Certainly, you know, it is important, you guys, that we don't talk about if you're going to prune your, yourself, don't do any pruning overhead. Don't get on the ladder. We want safety first. So that's why we call in the professionals. But talk to us a little bit about maybe start with proper pruning. And if there are some of those things that you see that are problems, what was what would proper pruning do? So yeah, like right away, you want to kind of look for, obviously we don't want um, precarious limbs that are over top of structures. And uh, we want to look for uh, a lot of trees that we have in, in our region. I know we experience a, a lot of large silver maples that have these giant co-dominant stems. And those are always um, always a bit of a potential hazard, right? Because they- Wait they, a minute, what is a co-dominant co -dominant stem? stem? Yeah, so basically, um, if the tree's not properly pruned uh, when it's a juvenile tree, then it uh, develops two central leaders. So that's kind of two big trunks that are like, I'm dominant, I'm dominant, <laughs> become co-dominant. And they're just massive, massive stems that will eventually lead to uh, failure because they're just, they're too, they're too big. It's not, uh, it's not a very, uh, a safe joint, right? There's just so much room for, for um, uh, water to sit in there and then lead to decay and then over time one of them is likely to fail so we really want to avoid that um, and that'll just be general maintenance from when the tree is young right but if you like say you move into a house and you already have a mature tree that has two massive stems uh, you want to make sure that if it is over your house we do preventative maintenance so we get all the dead wood that is over top of your house or your garage or where you park your car stuff like that we really want to look for like you said safety first so what if this were to fail what would happen and what would be in danger is kind of what you're looking at first and foremost um and then the obvious things like dead wood and hanging hangers in the tree um and then uh we would obviously come and take those out we want to prune out all as much dead wood as we can um and then um yeah, limbs that maybe there's a limb that has have developed a cavity over time and it's it's kind of over top of your driveway where you park your brain a new SUV, um, we would come and we would prune that off, right? So it's just that's a it's a potential hazard that doesn't need to be there. And um, if it were to fail, uh, um, it would just obviously cause potential damage, and it's completely avoidable. So it's things that we can look for in in the canopy of the trees. Got so got it. So that's pruning. I know that cabling. I mean, you talked about these uh, co-dominant leader trees. Sometimes, do you cable? Um, those yeah, kinds yeah. of trees or what would cabling do? What is that, talk to us about so, what that can do? If yeah, there's a, a lot of different ways that we can cable trees depending on the situation, the type of tree, how big it is. Um, but yeah, essentially it's what, it's what it sounds like. We, we would put a cable or install a cable into one, uh, one side of the tree. So I'm keeping my hands in the shot. I know. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Um, no, so we would cable, um, cable the tree essentially to itself. So um, we just have kind of a taut line holding it, not holding it, supporting it. Like for the most part, the tree does that itself. It's just uh, kind of to ensure that if it were to fail, it has uh, a bit of extra support there so that we could get to it in time before anything bad happened, right? Got so that idea, even with smaller trees, like birch trees and stuff like that, so it's a good idea to uh, to cable them if they have multiple stems and and you're worried about it throughout, uh, not just throughout the winter, but we get serious windstorms throughout all four seasons. So it's not a bad idea at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Susie saying that Davy cabled her huge oak. And so, you know, it's trees not only from ice and snow, but wind, you know, all seasons. Cabling can help save that big old tree, which could provide you much needed shade. Um, yes. And also a sense of security, I think, as well. Just yeah, for sure. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So um, another myth about ice. Sometimes we'll see trees leaning because of the ice. So is that something if a tree is leaning, should we pull it up? Um, no. Should we have it? no, don't do no, nothing. Same, same idea with shaking it off, right? Like you just 
the tree is naturally responding to whatever's happening. We don't need to go in there and and try and save it and, and be a hero. Just let it do its thing. Don't be mother nature. Yeah, it'll it'll likely naturally figure itself out. And if it doesn't, it's not your fault <laughs> that you didn't intervene. <laughs> well, I know if you guys are tuning in from Virginia and South, there is an ice storm happening there right now. So I, I, it's particularly in areas that aren't used to, I think, snow and ice, not only are they not good drivers in that weather, but no offense, listen, I'm a terrible driver in the snow and ice too. Who's a good driver in snow and ice? Maybe Canadians. Um, but <laughs> That comes with your license, right? We would, everyone here would say so, but that's not yeah. <laughs> Um, But you don't need to, you know, you, you don't need to do anything special for your trees, but you do need to be mindful. I think it's really important what you said about looking in particular to the areas where you have paths, um, particularly those areas where those trees might shade a path, right? Because then that path is going to be even icier. So you've got to really pay attention to... Uh, not just what's in your tree, but what's around on the ground. Maybe if you're walking around your tree, be particularly careful. Safety first. Definitely. So, okay, well, we talked about pruning, cabling. Um, one of the things that we always say with tree care is not all tree risks are obvious. So, you know, having an arborist out, do you guys do consultations year round? You come out to people's property year round? Yep, absolutely. We do assessments all throughout the year, every single day, yeah. So if you, like Ali said, if you've moved into a new home or if you're unsure about a tree that might be in an area that could fall on your new SUV or um, have someone come out and look at it because those tree risks could be something internally in the tree. It might not be the cavity or, you know, something that you can see could be something in the tree. You know, we have a, a bunch of pests. I mean, emerald ash borer, so many different kinds of pests that are eating the tree from the inside out. And so we don't know what, what those tree risks are. So that's why regular um walking around your tree and regular maintenance is important um one other thing i wanted to point out uh, before i forget um it, when you when you are inspecting your tree uh, any type of fungus uh, not to be confused with moss that grows on the bark normally um but uh, any kind of mushroom or fungus that is present on the trunk at the base on the roots system like popping up at the ground uh, is a really uh not a good sign it's it's a sign that there is decay in the tree and that uh, it is stressed in some way. So that's uh, that's a big thing to look at. It's a, it's an indicator for us when we're assessing trees, whether it's safe to climb them and tie into them and determining, uh, you know, like safe tie-in points for for to hoist ourselves up in, right? If we see if we see fungus up there, we, we kind of take a second look and we look into that and make sure that uh, we identify what we're looking at and, uh, and we make a plan with how we're gonna deal with it. So that's something that, that is very, for the most part, obvious, you'll see a mushroom on your tree or a weird growth and you're kind of like, ah, that's something where you could do local arborist and, and then figure out uh, if the tree is diseased, if it has a fungal disease, or maybe you're wrong, maybe it's just a just Normal. a part of the tree, who knows, but it's never a bad idea to call your arborist and have them come out and assess it, so. Well, Melanie is leading us, that's a great tip, thank you. Uh, right into another one of our questions, about um, whether myth busting or not. Is there any care for young trees? I feel like our younger trees, just like little babies, might need better care than others. So she's saying, what about wraps or what kind of care do we need to do for our young trees? Um, I would say no, like young trees, like mature trees, they are built to withstand their elements. So especially native trees in that region, um, they're going to be equipped with everything they need. They don't need a blanket. They don't need, um, I know. And like, it's like, it's uh, like, you just want to care for it and you want it, you want it to have the best environment, but uh, like essentially it, it has all of that already and it's equipped with that. So we don't, we don't need to really take any extra steps with, uh, with juvenile trees or mature trees as far as that goes. No, myth busted. I, do we have any myths that are actually true? We need to get some more questions here, see if we can bust some more myths. But no, Melanie, that's true. Myth. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> question. But um, you do not need to do any age. Doesn't matter with trees. And you think about your young trees, they're a lot more pliable. I don't know what the actual term is for when a branch is really pliable or bendy. Yeah. Bendy. Gumby, Gumby bendy. trees, how, gum, how bendy they are. And so um, I think when we're talking about wraps, um, we're talking about protecting trees that might not be appropriate for that zone 
more likely, right? If you're putting wraps around your containers or even when it comes to spring and we're getting buds or, or leaves on our trees, we might want to protect them from a frost. But um, so Ali is saying you do not need to protect your young trees. That is good news. So I hope you planted, did you guys plant any trees this fall? Let us know what you planted. Um, do you have a favorite tree, Ali? Oh yes, I have many favorite trees. Um, I really like Eastern red books red buds for landscapes and uh, weeping cypress trees or weeping new trees. They're lovely wizard-like. Oh, cool. But yeah, I, I like all trees. Of for course sure. you do. I know, it's like asking an arborist about that question. <laughs> pick their favorite kid or something. But I love red buds as well. We have uh, a rising sun red bud, which is a beautiful oh, and apricot color leaves. Yes, so do you guys have any more questions? We do have a couple more questions about, so we've got snow, ice, wind. Are there any other elements or any other things that we need to be worried about? You know, we've got snow coming down right now. So I'm not gonna go out and look at my trees now, but once the snow melts, is now a good time to walk around? I mean, not melt, the snow's still on my tree. Should I go look then or should I wait and see when it melts to see if there's any damage? I mean, it's not a bad, it's never a bad idea to check your tree. Uh, so if you're going outside anyway, yeah, definitely. Go shovel around your tree, have a look, make sure there's no ice present, put some salt down. And uh, yeah, give it, and it's not a bad idea to then go back and inspect it after the storm as well. You just, yeah. I, I kind of think about it as like house plants. You wouldn't really go, you might go a week or two on a regular basis uh, without checking your house plants, but you'd never go months. Yes or let alone year without looking and inspecting them, right? Unless, of course, they die. I have done that in the past, but I don't anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, but yeah, regularly. So people suffer, maybe not people who are fans of Davy's Facebook page, but I think we suffer from tree blindness. I mean, so often we feel like our trees will just care for themselves. Um, and I love the equation to houseplants. You're bringing something in your home, you see it every day. It needs maybe a little more care and attention. It's not out in mother nature, but you're, you still need to look at your trees and inspect them and look at them just as often as uh, you're looking at your houseplants. So I think that's a really good point. Care for your trees, look at your trees, observe, inspect, and call your arborists because they will love them just as much as you will. <laughs> so you mentioned something, Allie, that we didn't um, talk about in our you know we didn't talk about beforehand but you just mentioned salt so i know that sometimes excess salt with the tree roots salt you're just spreading around this time of year is probably not bad but what about if you do have trees near a major roadway is there anything yeah, you can oh, do that, that you know that can definitely cause salt damage and we do see that a lot along the highways and stuff um so that's something where you might need to take a preventative measure for uh, if if you live alongside a busy road and may, maybe it's a city tree, but it's still on your property and you love it, um, but it's constantly getting splashed with slush, that really slushy, icky, salty residue that comes up, um, it might be a good idea to then create a bit of a barrier. Uh, and maybe um, uh, the best thing maybe would be a large mulch, mulch ring around the tree. Uh, that way the base of the tree is is a bit farther not farther, but um, maybe it just is, has more of a barrier or if you need to put up a barrier, depending on how bad it is. But that, that might be a case where you do need to step in and, and kind of um, intervene because that's not really a natural uh, element that the tree was, was built, uh, equipped to survive, right? So that's an example where, if, where kind of stepping in is a good idea for sure. Now we can put mulch down in winter. I mean, is that something that people do, do a layer of mulch in winter, or should you have already done that in the fall? I mean, it doesn't, I, I never, um, I would never steer anyone away from mulch, no matter what time of year it was. It's probably easier to do in the fall. It's less cold. It's it's easier right. to handle. The mulch isn't frozen, but uh, it depends where you get your mulch from. If you have a place where they have mulch indoors, then that's fine. You can lay down mulch whenever. It's not really gonna affect, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect it one way or another. Right. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so what about spreading salt? There's no reason why you would spread salt that I can think of under your tree, but just regular person sidewalk salt. Unless it was a driveway. 
Yeah, so your driveway, maybe it's gonna run off, but should you be careful about how much salt you spread around the tree or is it the salt we spread probably not gonna do any, any it, harm? It probably, it probably isn't. The amount that you would put down on your walkway or your driveway isn't going, and you're not constantly like creating a whoosh effect with that. I'm, I'm not sure I speak for myself when I say that, but. Right, how uh, do you drive in your driveway? Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, but, um, it's not a bad idea to be mindful of, you know, areas that are closer to the trees. Maybe you don't go right up to the lawn, uh, with your salt bag or however you spread it. But, um, the, typically the amount that we would put down for a private residence isn't, isn't going to affect the root system or anything like that. Great. Um, and do we, should we flush it out in spring? If we do have one of those trees along the roadway, should we give it a good deep watering in spring to flush some of those salts out? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, obviously we want to like, if you have a tree that's in a, uh, a position like that, where environmentally its conditions aren't really conducive, then we want to make sure that we're taking the best care possible. So fertilizing it, watering it, we just want to be doing the regular things, not just after winter, but throughout the season as well. So uh, definitely kind of washing out wouldn't be a bad idea. I think the soil probably naturally does that a, a lot itself. Um, but I, I, anytime that you have a tree that has, you know, conditions like that, or, you know, it's right next to a construction zone, something, something that's not natural, so to speak, but that the tree is having to face, then you want to make sure that you're giving it the nutrients and, and everything that it needs to survive. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Courtney, I hope that answered your question about salt because this ice storm and wherever we're getting, I feel like people are going to be using a lot of that, um, Last question that I have, unless you guys have any more about winter watering. I know that's a topic that comes up a lot. And is that something we need to be concerned about doing with our trees if we don't live in an area that gets a lot of snow? Sorry, can you repeat that? I was looking at the comment box. I haven't <laughs> noticed it this whole time. <laughs> I know, it's fun. You get to look and see what people are saying. I know. Um, hi, everybody. Keep us updated. Send us more questions. Um, winter watering. Is that something that I obviously here in the Northeast and up where you live and we get tons of snow, so we probably don't need to be concerned about watering our trees. But what about areas that don't get that precipitation? Do we need to keep yeah. watering our trees throughout? Winter? Definitely. Definitely. It's obviously like it's based on your region. But if you're not if you're not getting water throughout or snow or the that doesn't have access to that kind of precipitation, precipitation throughout the year then you're gonna probably have to help it out a little bit because it's like any other plant or like any other living thing it needs water to survive so yes think house plants your trees are just giant house plants living around your house <laughs> living on this do not over right them. <laughs> living on this home we call earth so we need to care for them and we need to think of of our backyards and our neighborhoods like our homes so um, well, I think we've answered everybody's questions unless anything comes in while we're wrapping up, but this has been wonderful. I am so excited to get all of these tips on this snowy day because I do feel like being proactive is the most important thing. You know, we obviously as an arborist, I'm sure you're very reactive. People call after storms, um, but as homeowners and you guys out there listening, we can be proactive. We want to be farmers, not firemen. It's the second time I used that, used that today. We want to just make sure that we are caring for our trees before something bad happens. So arborists like Allie can do that. I know we've already posted um, the, the link to find your arborist. Maybe we can find that again because Allie will not be traveling to Virginia to care for your trees. She is going to be caring for trees in her local community. And we have arborists all over the country who can help care for trees in your local community. It depends where you Yeah, are. maybe she'll go to Florida or Arizona or something. <laughs> Palm Springs. Um, but... Yeah, but we, we, we care, David cares about your trees and they care about the safety of them. So we want to protect them. So thank you so much, Allie. This has been, oh, Melanie. Melanie snuck in with a final question. What about a young tree that broke in winter due to heavy snowfall? What's the best thing to do to nurse it to grow starting in the spring? Um, so it depends on where it broke, but definitely um, you want to get your burst out there to uh, give it an assessment and determine what the best mode of action is, but typically if something is broken off, we want to make sure that we uh, use our proper pruning techniques and prune it back to the best point of the tree, whether that's uh, another junction or back to the base. Uh, so we can 
and heal properly and it has the best chance of healing that that uh, wound up and then um yeah if we need to uh do any corrective pruning on top of that then they will they can decide on site but it's it's definitely savable uh but i would i would get it get it assessed and and maybe a, a fertilize in the spring isn't a bad idea and um yeah you can kind of go from there but call your local herbist have it assessed and you guys can develop a plan for it that's great melanie i think in the beginning Ali was talking about a uh, co-dominant leader. And so you want to make sure you're getting that proper pruning. That way, if it did break and now you're going to have two leaders growing up, I'm dominant. I love how you said that. Uh, no, I'm dominant. So you want to make sure that you're doing it proactively and, and correctly now. So 10, 20 years down the line, you don't have those problems. So I love that. That's a great tip. Um, it is able to be saved. That's the good news. Um, Melanie, I wonder where you live that you've already had a winter heavy snowfall. Yeah, where so do you sorry. live? So, uh, Melanie said thank you. So awesome. Any more questions from anybody? Um, I do have a question. So we are thinking about doing, this was supposed to be our last live of the year. We're thinking about doing one more on recycling your Christmas trees. So if you're watching now live or if you're tuning in later, we'd love to know if you'd love to hear um, another one on recycling our Christmas trees. We have a ton of great programs here, Allie, about recycling trees. People that take them and chip them, I'm sure you guys do That's too. Great, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so important. This year, our Christmas tree farms were sold out. I mean, people were just going crazy for cutting their own trees or bringing trees into their home. I think it's just, we are all home, right? We are all here. So uh, we wanna make the best of it. I'm looking at my tree right over there. And um, so let us know. We got a vote from Sandy. So let us know if that topic will be inter of interest to you or let us know what other topics will be of interest because we will be back in 2021 with a whole brand new um, Talking Trees Live series. So we'd love to know what topics you would be interested in. Let us know in the comments here and we will cover them at some point in 2021. So I guess that's it. No more questions. Allie, thank you very much for all of your insight today. Allie has thank a new little much. puppy that she... Um, her lovely co-worker took for a walk. Is he back? We have a little puppy love here. Because who doesn't love puppies? Oh my goodness. That's Cody? His name is Davey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Cody. that girl. My he's goodness. He's a little lamb. Oh, he's the cutest. Well, good luck training him. Thank Make you very sure much. That we got a quarantine puppy. So <laughs> lots of early mornings and little nips. Yes. Nips. So, all right, everyone, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for your time today, Ali. You have a wonderful Thanks holiday. For joining. Thank you for Be having safe. me. I appreciate it so much. Take care. Take care. Bye, everybody.